Good evening, Mzansi. Welcome to Training SA right here on SABC3. Zim Fry. And the weekend has officially begun. We're here to help you escape the norm the best way we know how with trending topics and conversation. Mm -hmm. I am the emperor of the house and I go by the name of my play. And I'm here with my lovely and regal Rifilwe. Mm. Mm. An acre? <laughs> and also in the house, the ever so beautiful reminds me of the great Charlize Theron. I know. Yo. A beauty the of Theron. Throne. Throne. The beautiful <laughs> and lovely Elma Smith. Thank you, but it's Throne. Throne. Mm. Throne. I am no trying, thank you over here. Thank I am you. trying to be nice. Throne. I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> why, right. why are you the emperor? I'm trying. I'm Who gave you this title? Guys, uh, let's just start about the fact that the Global Citizen Awards are mm -hmm. happening right here on SABC3. Mm -hmm. When's the date? It's on the 20th, mm -hmm. hosted by none other than Monsieur Jean Lejean. Ah, Rifilo, you speak. Jean Lejean sounds sexy. What did you say? Please Jean Lejean. Who's ah, this? Man. Also known as Chrissy Teigen. Rifilo. Oh, that one, yes. yes. You yes. actually... You <laughs> Legend. So I'm uh, looking forward to that. I want to say this, yeah. you speak so well. So, oh, I'm joining so us tonight to help us unpack so the trends and topics <laughs> that ended up on our radio, I, I couldn't help it, uh, is the beautiful radio and media personality, Pumim Lambo. Welcome to the show. Goddamn, for no more sugar tea. Oh, Puma Blair. Again. Okay. When's that, Puma Blair? Okay. Now we are trendy. We're going to go straight into it. <laughs> I'm not coping, guys. Let's go straight into it. Mark Zuckerberg is at it once again. Yes, you guessed it. It's another lawsuit. So, Facebook Inc. is being sued. This time it's for allegedly spying on Instagram users through their cell phone cameras. What? It <laughs> is getting diabolical. Early in the year, media reports sounded the alarm that IG was accessing iPhone cameras even when they were not being used. <laughs> Get this, Mark initially blamed this on a technical glitch. So this, of course, <laughs> got tweeps talking. And uh, this is what Devi underscore EXE had to say. It's creepy, but also so normalized that our phones and apps are monitoring us at all times. But the rabbit hole gets so deep in talking about this, plus a cashless society, mm. plus microchipping. Mm. It's scary what could happen to us okay. eventually yeah. as we debate all of this on social media. Yeah, yes, exactly. <laughs> Just fueling the machine a little more. Now, Facebook has faced dozens of class action and data lawsuits. They're currently in a legal battle over monopolizing social media networking through the fact that they also own WhatsApp mm. and, of course, Instagram. Um, so the question is, are you worried about the amount of info that social media sites have on you? Because some people are so worried about this government COVID alert app, and I'm like, you use Google Maps. Yeah. Yes. Good. Well, yeah. Uh, first of all, are you, are you worried about it, It's right? too late. You know, it's <laughs> like, even if I am, mm. it's too late. Like, I'm just thinking about all the things that I've signed up to, the location. The moment I walk towards my phone, just an app goes up. Like, it's too late. <laughs> Do you just, know what I'm saying? It's I too just, late. Your, your, your phone and your apps feel your approaching. They feel my you presence. I'm like, what's happening? Why is YouTube saying I must go open it? Do you There's, know what I'm saying? I, I, all I'm saying is that if you choose to look through my front camera, <laughs> You have to deal with what you see. I mean, all you see on mine is this. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Um, Tim Wu, Professor Tim Wu, basically wrote this amazing book called The Attention Economy. And there's a reason why we are addicted to these things, right? But then there's a reason why it's all free. And essentially, he says, if you're not paying for it, you are the product. So we need to, you know... Come to terms with that fact, but also know that it's not too late. There's a reason why the EU is getting all draconian mm. with uh, multinationals and social media companies, because they've decided to claw back our privacy, our rights, and all this data mining that's happening. So also, we need to just vak a skrik mm. as developing nations. Earlier on this week, Lizzo was trending on social media after she posted a few videos talking about a 10-day detox diet that she went on. In one of the videos, she shows us the transformation mm, that her body well. underwent in the 10 days. Maybe just the process. Let's not call it a transformation. Let's check it out. So I drank a lot and I ate a lot of foods and f***ed my stomach up in Mexico. So I decided to do JJ Smith's 10-day smoothie cleanse. This is day one right here. 
Moving on to day two, it's just basically you drink these green smoothies every day. Um, so I think what's crazy about the whole storm around this is that she mentions very specifically that she did it for health reasons, right? Yes. And that she had gastrointestinal issues. Yeah. But no, the people miss that. Let's check out just some of the comments <laughs> in response to uh, those videos that she posted. I'm torn, Gizzo. <laughs> I want you to feel great, feel healthy, but also I want you to love and accept yourself just as you are. Exo esco. Do you, Lizzo? Yeah, and I think that's a good point. We <laughs> want you to love yourself. We, mm -hmm. We're not dragging you because one. we hate. She yeah. says, Shelby says, please listen to your fans. We know you aim for transparency, but this is not the kind of stuff Ooh. that you should be promoting. Mm. Okay. okay, wow. And um. then, so Lizzo, um, oh, then there was another one that queer mom says, as a person who had eating disorders since I was nine, I'm saddened by the fact that this might encourage young people not to eat hoping she ate two, right? Then Lizzo came back with another video addressing the backlash. I did the 10 day smoothie detox. And as you know, I would normally be so afraid and ashamed to post things like this online because I feel like as a big girl, people just expect if you are doing something for health, you're doing it for like a dramatic weight loss. And that is not the case. Um, Mm. What's your Look, take on this? Um, I, I feel her. I, I literally leave the gym for like the entire year, go mm. back for a week, and I already feel like there's a difference. And you're nah, posting nah. already. And I'm already like day one, day two, day three, in different outfits, slaying them. Then the next week, I... But the real, question, the real question is, are you the girl that reads to respond or reads to understand? Because Lizzo never said, I'm out here, I'm finna lose weight. Uh-uh, refuse Liz no, no. Uh-uh. Uh, the twirling, yes. the twirling, the twirling. The body uh, language. Uh, the body yeah. language. Yeah. Yes, the no, body she... language. Well, we I feel like uh -uh. even if she was a skinny girl, yeah. if you were posting elapsed videos yeah. of you in your yeah. gym yeah. outfits yes. every day, yes. Yes. my brain, regardless of the words you use, Using. change. Yeah. My brain is going to go, okay, I'm supposed to notice something. I'm supposed <laughs> to notice something. Yeah, absolutely. I'm I, I, I just, just want to establish that I've been watching Gwyneth Paltrow doing her New Year cleanses for about seven years now and when Gwynny is on and she's doing these things I took her at a word that she's cleansing. Also I don't she know why we are cleansing. Like, let's also also the, uh, another issue that we have here is the I see people all the time mm. when they talk about weight loss and there's that whole thing of being unhealthy and going extreme yes. and that's what a lot of people are talking about here yes. yeah. and it's, uh, there's another thing that I always talk about it's when all these people talk about their diets and everything and mm. then you know what these people are actually lying they don't follow these <laughs> diets they're taking all this so if you are going to go out there I'm on a tangent if you're going to go out there <laughs> dishing out weight loss information sure. you actually be, be truthful to the people as to what you're doing, the supplements that you're popping, Absolutely. and all of those things. And don't just say it's don't just mislead. gym and healthy eating. Oh, okay. okay. I'm here for that. Don't mislead. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to call you to, to order, yeah. and we are going to move on to the next story because Mobley is on a tangent. <laughs> it was a, a quiet Tuesday morning, and then at 11.42, Somizi Buyani in Flongo Motaung posted this. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. <laughs> okay. So there was uh, yeah, la, 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 mixed emotions <laughs> with this tweet. Before we get into what other people are saying, what are your thoughts? Let's just start here. What? I think it was a fantastic strategy to sell the book to people because mm. it, that is obviously weird. It's like, what the hell? Why? It's supposed to be the other What about around. this makes you want to buy the book? I mean, he's a trendy guy. He's a cool guy. He's a ladies' man. Oh, whatever he what touches he on, whatever, whatever, whatever he touches, whatever he touches, people are just like, he could be wearing a pair of jeans. And people are like, oh my god, uh. do Giuseppe. So he's holding a book. It's like, oh my god, do Giuseppe oh, holding some easy book, guys. So it works. I think it works. I think it works. The strategy works for me. The funny thing about that, Elma, for Christmas, I wanted to buy your book, sign it, and give it to you. I really want to. I, I swear, that's Why? what I thought Why? about. Why? It's Why? a gift Can, to can you. you not just give me the money? I know. I wanted to buy the book, sign <gasps> it, 
I didn't give it to you. I really wanted to do it. Because you're important. I'm important, okay. so yes, I wanted to I understand. Give it. <laughs> okay, this is, this is totally he's more important. Man. I feel like you are fueling him. <laughs> do you have a book? Uh, no, no, I don't. But he's more important. But so <laughs> whenever you are around, Uma Blake, it's completely out of control. Okay, so, so you guys need to okay, stop so, whatever so, is that's so, going on. Okay, <laughs> Mpumi, thank you for stopping by. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to seriously reconsider the two of you on the same set ever again. If I have any oh. same matter. It's lovely to see you. Mm. I'll be back. <laughs> this is 2020. Okay. Bushoban. 2021. Bushoban. One. <laughs> okay. This is over now. When we return, we're going to be joined by Lilo Toboga. All of us need a break and something to drink. <laughs> Someone strong. Throwback. You. Refuse it. How young were you? I 32. was deep within the club. Oh, Blair, don't drag so Refuse like that 32. on TV. Six months. Okay, <laughs> you are. Who's a year younger than me? Can we just remember that? Yeah, but too? that's why I'm so touched on my studio. Um, you're still training. Uh, well, you are tuned into training today. Uh, we are going to regain focus shortly. Um, we are joined next by a phenomenal athlete who has a very unconventional story. He only started playing rugby. At 19, sure. but he has so much raw talent and passion. He made his way through the ranks and he is one of the leading props in the game of rugby, not in South Africa, in the world. In the Help world. me welcome the incredible Springboks and Blue Bulls prop, Lizo Koboga. Yay! How are you, Pastor? <laughs> Very well, thanks. And yourself, Alma? Uh, Good it's, evening. It's everyone. lucky to have you on the show. And you are doing such amazing things props on to and you. off. Yeah, Woo! props to you on the Thank amazing you. work that you've done, uh, Lizzo. Your career started at the EP Kings in 2011. And then in 2014, you made your debut in the Curry Cup. But I just want to know that, you know, that moment where you got the call up to represent your country. What did that feel like? To take us through that time. Yeah, that was such an amazing moment. Um, definitely a dream come true. Um, you know, every athlete wants to represent their country. So it was such a proud moment for me. And uh, because I was patient for long, you know, um, I just kept on believing. And it was such a huge honor to be able to pull on that jersey uh, yeah. finally. And uh, it was just amazing. Now, I feel like I need to explain to someone like Mable how intense the position is you play. Because you're in the front row, the dark arts of the front row. It requires so much technique. You've had to yes. make your way through yes. so many periods of injury. Um, yeah. What's been the, the biggest moment that you've missed out on? The game that you've gone, oh, I wish I could have just played in that one. Um, actually, the um, uh, all the World Cup games, yes, <laughs> and sure. um, and uh, definitely the uh, the game we play, we lifted the trophy here, uh, the trophy uh, a few weeks ago against the Pumas. I mean, uh, since I've been at the Bulls, it's been five years now. We haven't lifted any trophy. Mm. Actually, in ten years, we have not uh, lifted any trophy. So that was quite uh, special to be part of it. But, you know, um, as a player, you always want to play and not just be, uh, you know, part of the squad. Uh, but that was due uh, to the injury I had, um, part of the game. Uh, but I'm hundreds now, I'm fit and I'm ready. So, Lizzo, um, it's been established that um, I don't know a lot about rugby. So <laughs> I'll ask another question. <laughs> you do That's a okay. lot of incredible okay. work with the Lizzo uh, uh, Koboka Foundation. Right? Tell us what inspired yeah. the inception of this foundation and how, ha um, how have you navigated around doing communi uh, community work during these unprecedented times? Um, you know, the, the, the reason why I started the foundation is actually uh, inspired by how I grew up. Mm -hmm. I grew up in, in the rural areas. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, just to paint you um, a picture, we got electricity only last year in 2019. And yeah. I went to school under a tree, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the kids older, um, yeah, 
you know, had to walk kilometers mm. uh, to school because they had to go to the other villages that had the school, mm. um, the upper classes. And so um, I realized that, you know, there's a lot of talent there, mm. but there's no opportunities. So uh, that's why we I started the Lisa Popova Foundation, just to create and just to mm. give opportunity to the underprivileged mm. uh, communities through sports and education. Lovely. So um, I love that you are wearing a, a, a Bulls, a basketball uh, shirt. I know that you're a basketball <laughs> fan, but you also play for the Bulls, so there's a bit of a double oh, thing there Bulls. going on. You played soccer <laughs> until you were 19 and discovered rugby. Um, you've got kids of your own, uh, boys yes. in the house. What are they yes. going to play? Um they both like soccer, hey, and um, <laughs> um, but I think uh, you mean know, looking at the body, the, the younger one might play rugby because mm. um, it's, it's bigger, you know. I can see it's a prop already, um, you know. But whatever they choose, I don't mind. I will support them fully. Thank you for joining us, Lizo. It was great to catch up with you. All the best. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Have a great evening. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we have entertainment commentator and TV host, Phil Impella. See you in a little bit. So we'll continue the conversation. Hashtag talk on three. <laughs> Welcome back to Training SA. This past Tuesday night, the newly launched KZN Entertainment Awards kicked off in a grand affair at the Deben ICC. The most accomplished entertainment achievers from the province were awarded each a cash prize of up to half a million rand. Sure. Of course, I wouldn't know because I <laughs> was not invited. <laughs> So, entertainment commentator Phil Impella, who attended the awards when I wasn't invited, joins us to give us a recap of what really went down. Kupulo, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's good to be back. <laughs> <laughs> you were obviously invited. How you do you feel? I'm invited everywhere. So you, yeah, yeah. you who cracked the nod, Phil. Now tell for us, ne? Mm. everyone was very upset about the amounts of money being chucked yes. around here. Even Hulisane Ravele was like, waste of money. Yeah. Mm. And it even made the times. Mm. Yeah, uh, you know what? I'm glad that you, you started this with that question because that's the question that everybody's asking. Yes. Where is the money coming from? So obviously I had to ask. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Chile. You know? Um, so the awards are sold, the, uh, the whole thing is owned by a company called uh, Songs of Chat. Mm. Um, the company is owned by Mkso Gumeda. Uh, he's married to Zandi... Oh, Kiri Kumalo's sister. Yes, Zandi. Yes, oh. that guy. So okay. that guy owns uh, uh, Songs of Chat and they own the awards. And... Um, there was this misconception that the Department of Arts and Culture in KZN was funding. Okay. Uh, I've been told uh, that they are not funding this, but um, the organization is pursuing them for funding. So they have not put money behind this. So the money is entirely from private sponsors. So they're, they're preparing us for next year when we see a certain logo and then yes, say, no, we much. told you we're getting there. <laughs> mm. Okay. Yeah. So that's where the money is coming from. So it's a, it's a privately funded event mm. for now. Okay. But they, uh, they made it very clear that they are pursuing uh, government. Thank you for asking the questions that everybody wants to hear. Mm. Well, <laughs> so, <laughs> that's what I'm here. <laughs> so when they launched these awards, yeah. they said that they were going to take it to another level. They yeah. promised a night of glitz and glamour and whatever. Yeah. One, did they live up to that? And two, how were they different from all the other awards that we have? Mm. Look, I think the sentiment, let me start with that, the sentiment of the awards is different. You know, mm. uh, recognizing talent from a regional perspective and mm. not just, you know, um, nationally and mm -hmm. taking away this whole thing of people thinking that for you to make it as an entertainer you have to move to Johannesburg mm -hmm. you know and also like you know in America they've got like New York and LA and that kind of like you know creates a space for everybody to have okay. an opportunity wherever they're from so if you don't want to come to Joburg you can go to Kansas. so I love that aspect mm. of it. Uh -huh. So did the MCs of the night Pearl uh, to see and Somizi yeah. did they like bring that mm. did they bring that set that stage alive? Look uh, Somizi is an entertainer of note anything yeah. with Somizi in it obviously you're gonna get get that Pearl is a consummate professional 
professional. Yeah. So um, they did as well as one would have expected them, expected them to. So let's talk about the carpet. It yeah. wasn't a red one in this case. It was, it was a, a black, black one, carpet. Yeah. Who impressed you? What worked? Um, surprises for me are always very impressive. I mean, I did not expect Unomnebo to come and be, for me, the best dressed of the night. Uh -huh. You know, hey. Pearl looked great, but I mean, she looked amazing. She was radiant. Uh, she was on the red carpet with her husband. In terms know. of the males? The males. Um, my best dress would have been, uh, you see, with the males, a lot of males don't really, you know, try, you know. Um, mm. So you, there, there was a limited number of males that tried. Okay. So of the five of the males that actually tried <laughs> sure, <guys. laughs> to do something. Ooh, only five. SK, not in this one. Yeah. In the outfit that he wore before this one, it's mm. a blue one. Uh, he looked very, very dapper in that and very, like, you know, clean and, yeah. yeah. Mm. Sure, only five men. I'm still shook. All right, another best dressed woman then. Just yeah. one more. Another best dressed woman for me would be. I think Pearl. Pearl's uh, b uh, black carpet dress mm. uh, was, was very nice for me. Uh, it was shimmery. I don't know anything about fashion. Why are you asking me about fashion? You're an entertainment <laughs> reporter. <laughs> well, this fashion. is what you do. You know? um, <laughs> yeah, so I, I would go with, with, with Pearl, but I also like the outfits that they chose for her in terms of the whole pro when she yeah. was doing the production. Mm. Um, there was a bit of a nod to uh, like the modern and and the old, you know, Zulu mixing with modern aesthetic and all of that. I, I, I loved it. But cool. then again, hey, I'm not a fashion person. <laughs> all right. So there were many categories yeah. that are out there, guys, and people were winning money and yeah. people were winning money. And which one, which one do you say well, well deserved? Uh, you see, there's another thing that I like about these awards is because they would introduce people like myself to people that I would normally would not know mm -hmm. of because the media would not cover them, yeah. right? So there are a lot of people there, I, some I don't even remember their name now, mm -hmm. that I, I saw that, uh, who performed and who won. And I was like, oh, okay, that's, that's very interesting. But there's a guy called Kuzani. Um, Kuzani, yes. Mm. I'd never heard of him because the I don't Muscandi, listen to Muscandi Muscandi music. Yeah, Muscandi yes, Muscandi you know artists. what I mean? I'm being very honest right mm -hmm. now. And I was very impressed. I mean, the guy clearly has a fan base because the the huge. everybody there was very excited for him to win two mm. awards. Um, so he was the man of the, of the, of the night for me. Right? Very, very quickly, mm -hmm. award ceremonies are nothing without performances. Yeah. What, was your, what was your highlight? Controversially, Java performed uh, and he, he, he was amazing. And I know a lot of people didn't yeah. like the fact that he was performing with, you know, for a reason that we sure. all know. Mm. Thank you, Hupulo, Thank for you. joining us. Uh, and giving us the tea. Um, come back again to the show and to you people of KZN. I better get my invite next year. Wow. I'm demanding it. Don't I'm the emperor. Like that. I'm not sorry, I'm, not, I'm making a demand now. Make it a threat. Call it whatever. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and that's how we end Trending SA. And you know, we've helped you all week to escape the norm. Join us again on Monday right here on SAPC3. 